the sages said, O good sage, we have heard before that the offering of naivedya, eatables made to Shiva, should not be taken by others. Please tell us decisively about this and also about the greatness of Bilva. Sutta said, O sages, all of you please hear now attentively. I shall explain everything with pleasure. All of you who take up Shiva's sacred rites are really blessed. A devotee of Shiva who is pure and clean, devoutly performing good rites and of fixed resolve, certainly shall partake of Shiva's naivedya. He shall abandon all thoughts which are unworthy of being entertained. Even at the sight of Shiva's naivedya, all sins disappear. When it is taken, crores of merits flock in, in no time. A thousand sacrifices are of no avail. Hundreds of millions of sacrifices are useless. When Shiva's naivedya is eaten, one will attain identity with Shiva. If in a family Shiva's naivedya becomes popular with the members, that house becomes sacred, and it also can make others sacred. When Shiva's naivedya is offered, it shall be accepted with pleasure and humility. It shall be eaten eagerly while remembering Shiva. If anyone who is offered Shiva's naivedya delays taking it immediately, thinking that it can be taken afterwards, he will incur sin. If anyone has no inclination to take Shiva's naivedya, he becomes a sinner of sinners and is sure to fall into hell. After initiation in the Shaiva cult, the devotee shall partake of the offerings of eatables made to the phallic image, whether conceived in the heart or made of moon slab, silver, gold, etc. The naivedya of all phallic icons is called a great favor and is auspicious. A devotee, after initiation into the Shaiva cult, shall eat it. Please listen to the decision with pleasure on partaking of Shiva's naivedya by persons who take initiation in other cults but maintain their devotion to Shiva. With regard to the following phallic images, that which is obtained from Shalagram stone, Rasalinga, lingas made of rock, silver, gold, crystal, and gems, lingas installed by devas and siddhas, Kashmir lingas and Jyotir lingas, partaking of the naivedya of Shiva is on a par with the rite of Chandrayana. Even if the slayer of a brahmana partakes of the remains of food offered to Shiva, it quells all his sins immediately. In regard to Banalinga, Metallic linga, Siddhalinga, and Svayambhu linga, and in all other idols, Chanda, one of the attendants of Shiva, is not authorized. Where Chanda is not authorized, the food offering can be partaken of by men with devotion. But no man shall partake of the food offering where Chanda is authorized. After performing the ceremonial ablution duly, if anyone drinks the water three times, all the three types of sins committed by him are quickly destroyed. If at all anything from Shiva's naivedya is not to be taken, it is that article which is actually put on the linga. O great sages, that which is not in contact with the linga is pure, and as such it can be partaken of. When it is in contact with the Shalagram Shila, it is pure and can be taken whether it is food offering, leaf, flower, fruit, or water. O great sages, thus I have told you the decision about food offering. Now hear me attentively with devotion. I shall explain the greatness of Bilva. This Bilva is the symbol of Shiva. It is adored even by the gods. It is difficult to understand its greatness. It can only be known to a certain extent. Whatever holy center there is in the world finds a place under the root of Bilva. He who worships Mahadev in the form of Linga at the root of a Bilva becomes a purified soul. He shall certainly attain Shiva.
He who pours water over his head at the root of a bilva can be considered to have taken his bath in all sacred waters in the earth. Verily, he is holy. Seeing the water basin around the foot of a bilva tree full of water, Shiva becomes greatly pleased. The man who worships the root of a bilva tree offering scents and flowers attains the region of Shiva. His happiness increases, his family flourishes. He who places a row of lighted lamps at the root of a bilva tree with reverence becomes endowed with the knowledge of truth and merges into Shiva. He who worships the bilva tree, abounding in fresh tender sprouts, becomes free from sins. If a man piously feeds a devotee of Shiva at the root of a bilva tree, he reaps the fruit thereof ten million times more than in the usual course. He who makes a gift of rice cooked in milk and ghee to a devotee of Shiva at the root of a bilva tree will never become poor. O Brahmanas, thus I have explained to you the mode of worship of Shiva's phallic image with all its divisions and subdivisions. It is of two types. One is enjoined for those who are actively engaged in worldly pursuits, and the other is meant for those who have actually renounced them. The worship of the pedestal yields all cherished desires to those who are engaged in worldly pursuits. They shall perform the complete worship in a vessel. At the end of consecration, he shall offer cooked shali rice as food offering. At the conclusion of worship, the phallic image shall be kept in a pure casket separately in the house. The nivrita, he who has renounced the world, shall perform kara puja, worship in the palm of the hand. He shall worship that food to the deity which he is accustomed to take himself. The subtle phallic image is specially recommended for the Nivritas. He shall offer holy ashes both for worship and food offering. At the end of worship, he shall always keep the phallic image on his head.